recent conversation, someone brought up a theory as to why they thought Vicar Musso remains the Lucchese boss. And for the record, he is the official boss of the Lucchese family. This person's theory is that it's accepted because it puts less of a law enforcement focus on the guys in the street because the official boss is in prison and that Vic's cut on Lucchese profits is much less compared to if he was out in the street. I agree with the last part of that theory because it's accurate. Now let's start with the first part. You have an official boss, Vic Amuso, who's in prison doing life and most likely will die there thanks to his incompetent lawyers. Speaking of which, what do you think they're now telling Vic and his family, being that the judge knocked him down for compassionate release? Don't worry, we're working on the appeal as we speak, while they hold their greedy, blood-sucking palms out. My definition of defense attorneys is as follows. Criminals who don't have the balls to use a pistol, so they rob you with their slick-talking mouths by profiting off your misery. With Vic being the official boss in prison, a fact known to the government and the FBI, the Lucchese acting boss and his administration become the targets. Who do you think target number one is? It's not Vic. They already have him in prison. Salute to the quick thinking minds, because you're correct. It's Mikey DeSantis. In his case, just because the word acting precedes boss is irrelevant to the FBI. Back to the person's theory that Vic gets less money, which is correct. When the present Lucchese administration is sitting around carving up money, it goes like this. Two for you, two for you, two for me, and one for Vic. He's getting a piece of the action, but not a piece of all the action, only some of it. Basically, Vic gets what they choose to give him. At Christmas time, he was getting an envelope between 150 to 200,000, and that gets dropped off at his house or someone meets his son and gives it to him. When his wife was alive, it was commonly known that after receiving that envelope, she would point her car towards Atlantic City. That fact in particular would make Johnny Sideburn sick. As he envisioned her blowing all the money at the casino tables, he would say, as soon as she got that money, off she went to AC and she would blow it all. Whether she actually blew it all or not, obviously is pure speculation. Nevertheless, it wasn't a secret that she liked Atlantic City. And she was a take-no-shit type of woman. Years ago, when her kids were younger, the FBI was sitting outside their house, and she marched right over to their car and told them off. She told them that they were scaring the kids. And she was no nonsense when it came to business. She sold approximately $10 million in property that Vic purchased in and around Howard Beach. And I'm sure she donated some of that money to the hotels in Atlantic City. When she passed away, there was bad blood in her family for a while. Prior to marrying Vic, she had two daughters, one who's married to Joey DiBenedetto. And with Vic, she had another daughter and a son. Like most families, the bad blood was the result of money. Supposedly, Vic was disregarding his stepdaughters. And all the kids weren't speaking for a while because of this. One day, Joey's wife was arguing on the phone with Vic, and Joey got so mad that he yelled out, hang up on that dick. A lot of people questioned that if Joey was my childhood friend, why didn't he go to Vic so he could help me? The story I just mentioned was one of the reasons why he refused to go see Vic, but as for the main reason, he explained to me. There was a time when I was trying to convince him to go visit his father-in-law, and at the time, he said he hadn't seen him in 14 years. I told him it didn't look right and that he should just go up there. He said, John, if I go visit him, then he's going to start with sending messages through me. And then I'll be going back and forth carrying messages from him to the street. And I'll have a big bullseye on my back and eventually will get pinched. I couldn't argue with him because he happened to be right. So Joey refuses to go up and see his father-in-law. And that's why I didn't ask him to try to help me in my situation. Back to the incompetent lawyers. Where do you think the money comes from to pay their ridiculous high fees? It's not coming out of the $10 million from the sale of the properties. It comes from the Lucchese family. I remember one time years ago, we were all told we had to come up with $1,500 to give to Vic. 1000 was for one of his appeals, and 500 was for renovations being done to his house. That's what you call greed. And it's the leading reason why he never stepped down. Naturally, we all handed in the money, but there was a lot of complaining going on. If you compare Vic to Tony Ducks, when Tony Ducks got indicted for the commission case, he didn't give keeping the official position a second thought. He understood if convicted, it would be a life sentence. 
So he immediately began the process of replacing himself as boss, as well as securing an administration, because his underboss, Tom Mix, and consigliere Christy Tick were indicted with him. Conversely, Vic, 30 years later, with a life sentence, refuses to step down in what can only be viewed as a classic case of greed, as well as ego. Vic has a history of handpicking acting bosses. He chooses ones that are not only loyal to him, but ones he can control. In Cosa rules, the boss is the boss until either he steps down or dies. The sensible thing to do is if there's no light at the end of your sentence's tunnel, step down for the good of the family. I'll briefly mention the super thanks icon found beneath this video for those of you who want to show appreciation for the unique content being put out by this podcast. I thank everyone who's used it. What do I mean by the good of the family? It's simple. What possible good can a boss who's sitting in a can doing life bring to a family? Absolutely none. In the past, viewers have questioned if Vic approves new members getting inducted. And the answer is no. Vic doesn't know 80% of the members in the family. And they don't know him either. Right now, Vic represents the face of the Lucchese family. A figurehead, which is a leader with no power. Make no mistake, he can order something. Absolutely. We've seen it when the transition took place. One letter from him, and we had a new acting boss. But Vic's power is limited compared to any boss that's out in the street who possesses absolute power. Vic will remain in prison, where he'll die with his title of official boss. And as I previously stated, it's the result of allowing incompetent lawyers to spew lies and negativity instead of sticking to the facts like his health and age. His lawyers did release to the court, and now the public, Vic's own words in a written request to the medical staff. Let me read it. I need a cortisone shot in my hip and knee, and I'm in severe pain. Please, if there is a God, help me with this as I am 90 years old and in severe pain. I want to focus on a section of those words. If there is a God. I'm sure when his motion for compassionate release went in, and his incompetent lawyers told him he had a good shot, due to the negativity they put in the motion, at some point, most likely, Vic prayed that God would release him. But what the official boss of the Lucchese family failed to realize is, if you don't believe, you don't receive. Mm -hmm.